Now, why did Jesus say that he'd be raised on the third day? Why was it so specific? Because throughout the Old Testament, there was a biblical pattern of things happening on the third day. And we'll get into that in just a moment. But over and over and over again in the Old Testament, there were things that would start with the phrase, on the third day. And on the third day always indicated a time when God came down and intervened in the course of humanity. On the third day was always a time when God came down and brought salvation, when God brought deliverance, when God destroyed the enemy, when God brought victory, when God turned things around, when God brought them to another level. Come on, on the third day became a very important phrase within the Hebrew culture, and it was all prophetically pointing to a time when Jesus would go into a tomb and three days later be raised up. This year is all about resurrection life. This year is all about resurrection power. This year is all about God turning situations around. God coming down and intervening in the course of our lives, in the course of humanity, in the course even of a nation. And the Lord started speaking this to me about halfway through December. When God gives you a word, you don't always realize you're going to have to Take that word and battle with it for yourself. (laughs) Oh, this is for the body of Christ, Lord. (laughs) So, Pastor Tiffany, are you here? Wave your hand at everybody. I'm going to tell a little story on Pastor Jason, Pastor Tiffany. We, um, this year, uh, last year at Christmas in 2021, we announced to our family that for Christmas in 2022, we were going to use up this very big, large cache of miles that we had, that we had accumulated um, through, uh, through Delta. And we were going to take ev- everybody, the whole family, 14 of us, to Colorado for a snow vacation. Because a lot of our grandchildren had never seen snow. So we were flying out on Christmas Day. And we, as we've often said here, we actually, we really, really do need more prayer on vacation than we do on ministry trips. For some reason, Okay. But on our way out from Atlanta to Denver and really throughout the day, our sweet little 12-year-old granddaughter, Brielle, suffered from a medical emergency. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but it was very, very serious and to the point that when we landed in Denver, um, paramedics had to come on and take her off the plane and take her um, to the hospital, directly put her in an ambulance on the tarmac and take her directly to a hospital. How many know this is not the way you want to start a vacation that you've been planning for for a full year? (laughs) Made, Made us all mad. I want you to know Brielle is doing great. She's doing wonderful. She was in the hospital for a couple days. um, And then they came up and they joined us um, up in the mountains. And we had a wonderful, wonderful time. We took all kinds of wonderful pictures so that we would remember what a wonderful time we had. Because that that was a horrible beginning. And then we were coming home on New Year's Eve And as we were boarding the plane, we got on first because we were quite the tribe, and they let us get on early, and and, uh, part of the group went to the back of the plane, and part of the group was in the front of the plane, and we weren't on the plane one minute, and all of a sudden they came on the announcement, and they said, medical emergency in the back of the plane, which is where we had just seen Tiffany taking Brielle to, and we immediately jumped up, and we thought, it's Brielle, so we started running to the back of the plane, And it wasn't Brielle, it was Pastor Tiffany. And without going into a lot of details, she herself suffered from a medical emergency. She collapsed and she stopped breathing. And it lasted several minutes. I don't know how long the whole episode lasted. Lasted for several minutes. But we were having to call life back into her. She stopped breathing. You know, it's one thing to preach a message. It's another thing... When this is your kid, when this is your wife, this is your grandchildren, this is, you know, it's another thing when it's like here you are doing this. And so at one point when Pastor Tiffany stopped breathing, 
I, I said to the back of the plane, I said, everybody pray. And there was this cute little Hispanic family over here and they're like, okay, yes, yeah. And they, you know, they're jumping in and they're praying with us. The flight attendants are praying. Everybody's praying. JJ was calling heaven down as loud as he could. Jesus, you are a miracle worker and I decree you're going to do a miracle for my, I mean, it was, it was intense. Not the way we wanted to see our vacation end either. So they had to come on the plane, take her off the plane, load her into an ambulance, and take her to a hospital. Everybody say resurrection life. Pastor Tiffany's here today. She's alive. She's well. She's breathing. She's triumphing. We're in a third day hour. You know what? We're going to all have to memorize Isaiah 54, 17 that says this. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And I want to remind you, we cannot be cursed because the shout of the king is in our midst. I want to remind you, Jesus became a curse so that we don't have to be cursed. And we've got the Holy Ghost inside of us who is the yoke destroyer, the curse breaker. Amen? But how many know we walk through stuff? We walk through stuff. And in my calculations, the Bible says if you catch a thief, he's got to restore double. There's another translation, there's another verse that actually says if you catch a thief, he's got to restore seven times. So family, we've got seven vacations coming back to us, okay? Paid for by the devil, okay? I'm just, we got to quit just taking it and we got to start demanding that he repay. Amen? Tiffany and Brielle are doing fine. They're going to be fine. God is raising them up. But I'm telling you that we're going to press into this third day anointing and we're going to see victory after victory after victory. Here's the thing is that sometimes to get to victory, you got to go through a battle. In prayer this morning, Pastor Greg was leading us in an awesome place of prayer. He's telling us that we're going to see things we've never seen before. And I got the picture of the Red Sea. You know, Israel has been released from their captivity. They're standing at the Red Sea. Pharaoh's armies are coming down on them. All they could see was the wall of disaster. <laughs> right? Think about it. They didn't even have a paradigm or a grid to know how to pray for the miracle that God was getting ready to do. Because it had never been done before. Some of you might feel like you're looking at a wall of impossibility or a wall that spells disaster when actually what God's getting ready to do is turn that wall into a door that becomes the door of the supernatural where God comes in and blows our mind by doing things that we've never seen him do before, doing things that we don't even currently know how to pray about because it's never been visited on the earth before in that way. 